Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to avoid the obvious answers and find the obscure ones. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Rebecca. This is my husband, Will, and we're from South East London. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Katrina. This is my partner, Farzad, and we're from Sutton. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Oscar, and this is my partner, Harrison, and we're from Beckenham in Kent. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my friend Rochelle, and we're from Leeds. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Very warm welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. The ant at our picnic, the deck at our disco. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Yeah, and to you. Uh, we've got two couples on their final show. Yeah. Podiums two and three. Welcome back. They've both been through to a head-to-head, -head, though. So they, uh, they, they know their business. Uh, Rebecca and Will, welcome back to your second show. Got knocked out in round one last I time. I know. I yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rochelle and Chris, lovely to have you here. You're, you're our only newcomers. Oh, this is interesting. Mark and Linda got through to the final last time and didn't win the jackpot, which means we're adding another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. That's exciting. If everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. All you have to do is remember this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated. So keep your scores nice and low and everything will be great. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Literary fiction. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Books with female characters in the title. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you the titles of seven books on each pass. Uh, we are missing out the word of a female character that's in the title of these books. So what is the female character we're missing out? Seven on the way up, seven on the way back. OK, so what are the female characters missing from these book titles? Here they come. A's Adventures in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, 1865. C's Webb, E.B. White, 1952. Cider with R. Laurie Lee, 1959. A of Green Gables, L. M. Montgomery, 1908. J. E. Charlotte Bronte, 1847. P. Eleanor Hodgman Porter, 1913. And What K. Did. Susan Coolidge, 1872. Rebecca, welcome back. Hi. Here for your second show. Uh, remind us all about you. Uh, well, I'm Rebecca. Um, I live in South East London with my husband, Will, and two lovely daughters and three cats. Um, three cats? Yes. I mean, that, that, that's a lot of cat. It's, it's slightly more than we ever intended. Yeah. Are they all closely related? <laughs> um, there's a mother and son who we sort of adopted first. Yeah. And then we had another one just literally turn up at the door as a stray. Wow. Poor thing. It was all skinny and it had a tick on its neck. And we took it to the vet and said it's probably been on the streets for about a month. So... Wow. It came home with us. What a lovely yeah. story. Yeah, she's the boss cat now. Nurse her back to when health. They've got, when they've got a tick on the neck, it means they've been verified by Twitter, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rebecca, what are you going to go for on our board here? I think I'm going to go for the bottom one and say Katie. What Katie did says Rebecca. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Rebecca. What Katie did. What Katie did is right. Down that goes to 36. Great start to the round. Well done. Very well played. Lovely start. Yeah, two, uh, two sequels to that. Um, what Katie did at school and what Katie did next. Next, yeah. Fun. You would think that what Katie did next would be the second Might one. Might be the second one, yeah. But this What Katie did at school sounds more like a bit of a, you know, we branched out a bit. Like yeah, that then. sounds like you're running out of ideas for yeah. your third book. Yeah, what Katie did before... Oh, I imagine is what Coolidge had, had up her sleeve. What, and then what the Katie did in space. Now what Katie did on ice. That's fun. Oh, that's, that's good. the touring show. At the Brighton Centre. Yeah, fun. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Richard Farzad, welcome back. This is your third attempt. Uh, remind us all about yourself. I am 42 years old uh, and planning engineer working for oil and gas industry. In my free time, I like cooking, running, hiking. Um, I managed to finish 10K Baker Hughes uh, charity in Aberdeen 2018. Wow, good for you. Uh, Farzad, what are you going to go for on our board here? Uh, unfortunately, Katie was my answer, but uh, I'm going for the first one, say Alice. Alice for the top one. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. 
Ooh, 92 for Alice. Uh, I mean, that's not a bad score, is it? Like 160 years after something was written. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Oscar, welcome back. Thank you very Great much. Great to have you with us again for your third attempt. Remind us all about yourself. So I'm Oscar. I live in Beckenham in Kent. Uh, I'm a ballroom and Latin American uh, teacher and Latin American dancer. I'm also a chartered accountant by night. Which came first, the dancing or the chartered accountancy? The dancing, always. The dancing, dancing always. always. It's um, something that I've been passionate about for a long time um, and something that I'm actually really passionate about is getting more diversity and inclusion into ballroom and Latin American dancing um, because you don't see it so much in that form of dancing. My most recent title is being the current South African champion and that's a place where you do see a lot of diversity, so it's something I'd like to bring over here as well. Good luck with that, Oscar. What Thank a brilliant uh, and worthy endeavour. Uh, what are you going to go for on our board? I hope the one I'm thinking of is correct. I'm going to go for the one in the middle, and I want to say Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables, says Oscar. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Anne. Well, 92 is the high score, and you pass that with ease. 36 is the low score. There you are on 49. Not bad. Yeah, the Netflix series, Anne with an E, is sort of like a kind of a, a sequel to that. That's how she always introduced herself. Oh, Anne with Anne an e. e. Yeah. I think yeah, I knew yeah. her in the late 80s. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I did too, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Rochelle, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm 32 and I currently live in Leeds and I work as a customer success manager at a tech company. Do you manage people's success? I do. That's, that's good. I mean, that's... Oh, level. Imagine having to work in the customer loss it's department. Sad, sad That'd place. be just really <laughs> depressing. Oh, customer success. Um, living currently in Leeds, does that suggest that you, you aren't originally from Leeds or you're, you're planning to move elsewhere? <laughs> Leeds, be warned. Yeah, I'm not from Leeds, as you can tell by my thick accent. I'm from Birmingham. The, uh, almost indecipherable. I mean, really mm. impenetrable. <laughs> thick, brummy accents there. Um, oh, I, th I thought I was watching Peaky Blinders for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rochelle, you're the last person to have this board. Do you feel like filling in Ooh. all the blanks? Um, so I think it's Charlotte's Web. I'm not sure on the third one. The Charlotte Bronte one, I think, is Jane Eyre. The only book I can think of that is a woman's name that begins with P is Penelope. Um, but I'm not too sure. I'm going to go for Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web, says Rochelle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is right. That goes down to 68. Not bad. Very well played, yeah. A pig called Wilbur and a spider called um, Charlotte. Shall we look through the rest of the cider with... Rosie. Rosie. Um, and it's what's 35 points that we did that at school. I remember. Yeah, there's a story about that that he never said who Rosie was It's someone he drank cider with. Yeah, essentially. yeah, and, uh, but 25 years later She was sort of outed. It was his cousin by marriage Rosie Buckland and she said oh never I didn't drink cider with didn't him. I didn't happen. drink cider. We never and did that on her 99th birthday She was given some champagne by her granddaughter and it's the first time she'd had champagne The first thing she said was oh it tastes a bit like cider so ha! she had been drinking cider. They got her. Did she titter when she said, tastes a bit like cider? Mm -hmm. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. That's no. a good question. <laughs> History didn't relate. Yeah. Um, Charlotte Bronte. Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre. I would have scored you 53. Now, not a lot to go on here unless you know the book. Holly Anna. Holly oh, Anna. Very yeah. well done if you said that. I had mm. three points. Wouldn't have got that. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that, no. Uh, thank you very much. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. I can tell you, Rebecca, 36 is the best score of the past. So, Rebecca and Will, I think round two beckons. Uh, then we travel up from there to 49, which is where we find Oscar and Harrison, and then up from there to 68, where we find Rochelle and Chris, and then 92, Farzad and Katrina. So, a little bit ahead. Katrina, good luck with the next board. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more book titles up on the board with uh, female characters missing. And here we go. We have got M, Roald Dahl, 1988. A.G. Anne Bronte, 1847. My Cousin R, Daphne du Maurier, 1951. B.J.'s Diary, Helen Fielding, 1996. The Prime of Miss J.B., Muriel Spark, 1961. T of the D'Urbervilles, Thomas Hardy, 1891, and E is missing, 
Emma Healy, 2014. There we are. Chris. Hello. Welcome to Point. Just tell us all about yourself. So, I, my name's Chris. Um, I share a house in Leeds with Rochelle, and I work as a doctor currently in, um, at York Hospital. Have you been based up there for ages and ages, or is it, is it a...? Um, so, I, I went to university at Leeds University. Right. Um, originally from the southwest, but I've been up in Yorkshire. Right. Rochelle and I actually met um, at, a, at a summer camp we were both um, working at uh, quite, a, quite a while ago, probably like 10, ten years ago, ago now. So. And stayed in contact since then. And Very good. And became yeah. housemates. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Now, Chris, you are on 68. Mm. 23 or less would get you through even now. Right. So I know a few. Um, I'm going to play it fairly safe. Um, I'm going to say Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Tess of the D'Urbervilles. OK, I hope it's not too safe, because mm. safe can become very, very dangerous in this game, remember. Uh, here is your red line. It's quite low. Where do we end up with Tess of the D'Urbervilles? I think that's all right. That's all right. 45 is what that scores and takes your total up to 113. Yeah, well done. There's a lost Thomas Hardy novel, The Poor Man and the Lady. It was rejected by um, several publishing houses. Uh, but it's completely disappeared. Fascinating. What stage of his career? Do you um, know? Early. Early on. Yeah, before he was a before, before he had his big hits. Um, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Harrison, welcome back. Um, remind us all about yourself. I'm Harrison. I'm a professional dance teacher and dancer from Beckenham. Do you ever dance in shows? Do you do that kind of sort of musical theatre dance? Have you ever done that? Uh, no, I haven't actually. But I did. Um, I used to dance in a school, uh, and they did summer summer camp things with a show at the end in the theatre. So that's pretty much as close as. So you have done goes. that, but it just didn't really didn't yeah, really it wasn't, thrill yeah. you. I'd rather the competition side of things. Yes, yeah. much more fun. Yeah. So okay, right, Harrison, you are on forty nine. Sixty three or less gets you into the next round. Yes, um, I'm not hugely confident, but because just because I'm not sure if he actually wrote it, but I'm going to say uh, Matilda at the top. For Roald Dahl. Yes. Matilda. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Matilda. Here's your red line. It's absolutely right. Gets you into round two. Good enough, Harrison. There we are. 49. Exactly the same score as Oscar had in the first yes. part. In fact, takes your total up to 98. Well, play Harrison, of course, there's a lovely stage version of that now, yeah. um, done by Tim Minchin and Dennis Kelly. When my uh, youngest child first left primary school, they all sang When I Grow Up. And that was a tearjerker. I bet it was. I'll say that. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> Long time ago, though. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, Katrina, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Katrina. So, uh, living in Sutton, I'm a purchaser for a chemical distribution company. Um, but I've done a few other jobs in my career, and I was a, worked in a cheese shop for about five years. Oh, now that's fun. It was very fun. Uh, yeah. Do you love cheese? I, I mean, love was, cheese, yeah. yeah. What, what, sort of, what sort of cheeses do you favour? I mean, I do like the French cheeses, but there are some very good British cheeses as well. There really so, yeah. are. Do you like quite a strong cheese? I like a good strong blue cheese, A yeah. good strong, very much the same as me. Yeah. Mmm. Ah, oh, that really has got my mouth watered, <laughs> just even thinking about it. Um, Katrina, you are on 92. We're looking for a score of 20 or less. I might just take a complete guess, and I think it... Yeah. I know a couple that are definite, but I'm going to risk it and go with my cousin Rebecca. My cousin Rebecca, says Katrina. My cousin Rebecca, here is your red line. No. Oh, oh. You won't be the only person who said that, Katrina. I'm afraid that's incorrect. Scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 192. Yeah, sorry, Katrina. She did, she did write Rebecca, but uh, that's, it's not this book, I'm afraid. It was just called Rebecca. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Will. Hi. Welcome back. Um, remind us all about yourself, Will. OK, I'm a financial controller for a hotel company. I'm currently opening a new hotel in East London. See, this is exciting. How many hotels are there in the, in the chain? Um, it's got a complicated hierarchy. Um, for the hotel management company, there are many across Europe. Um, I, I'm opening just the one uh, brand, the type of brand uh, in East right. London. So it's, it's a bit complicated. We it's have, very complicated. We have owners. But there are have... different brands within the umbrella Indeed. thing. Yeah, Listen, so we've got, we got 40 minutes till the Listen, news starts. We, <laughs> easily, we, we can go out. through the whole corporate structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start exactly. at the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Will, 
brilliant low score <laughs> from Rebecca um, in the first pass. It means you're through to the next round, whatever you say. Do you want to talk us through this board and fill in our blanks? Well, I, I, there's only one I actually know. I'm thank, thankful that hasn't gone already. Um, there's a couple that ring in a bell. Uh, my cousin Ramona, no idea if that's right. Eve is missing, possibly. Um, I knew Tess of the Durbervilles. I knew Matilda. Um, the only other one I know on there, uh, Bridget Jones' diary. Bridget Jones' diary. OK, well, no red line. You're already through. How far down the column do we get with Bridget Jones? Bridget Jones, absolutely right. And that goes down to 63. <laughs> takes your total up to 99. All you needed to do, well done, Will. Let's fill the rest of these in. The Anne Bronte novel? Joe, yeah, that's the one I don't know. It's Agnes Grey. There we go. There you go. Would have scored six points. My cousin... Rachel. My cousin Rachel uh, is the answer. Yeah, it was a prequel to My Cousin Vinny. Uh, would have scored you 14 points. Um, the Prime of... Miss Jean Brody. Absolutely, by Muriel Spark. One of my absolute favourite writers. If you haven't ever read any Muriel Spark, then um, treat yourself. 38 points for that. Uh, do you know the bottom one? That I, I don't know that one either. Elizabeth is missing. Elizabeth. Elizabeth is missing. Would have scored four points. Best answer up there. Well done if you said that. Nice. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, we have to say goodbye to a pair. And I'm afraid that pair is our lovely returning couple, Katrina and Farzad. This is where we say goodbye. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming to play, Katrina and Farzad. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Very well done, everybody. Here we are in round two. Best of luck to everybody. Our category for round two today is... Food and drink. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Soups from around the world. Richard. Yeah, about time, right? Yeah. Uh, in a moment, we're going to show you the names of five recipes from the BBC Food website. They're all soups from around the world. Can you tell us any ingredient you'd find in any one of these, please? Exciting. Mm. Oh, I love a soup from around the world. Oh, yeah. Mm. I like space soup. <gasps> I've never yet had it. Oh, it floats. Oh, it's amazing. And you just have to go... You have to float up next to it and just bite off bits yeah, of it. Exactly. Wow. Oh, lovely. Wow. Spock a leaky. I like it. Ah, that's, just, that's literally all I've got. That's <laughs> all I've got. Right, so it's soup ingredients. That's what we're after. And here they come. We've got Justine Patterson's Moroccan style soup, Nick Nairn's traditional Cullen skink, Sophie Dahl's Tom Carr soup, the Hairy Biker's Borscht, and Tom Kerridge's healthy minestrone soup. There we are, Will. OK, um, I think sometimes the obvious ingredients are overlooked, uh, so I'm going to go with pepper. Oh, aren't they overlooked? Pepper. Did anyone overlook pepper? Let's find out. Pepper's in there. Pepper's very much there, Will. Down it goes to 19, not bad. 19 for pepper. Uh, yeah, it's in the, the Tom Carr soup, it's in the Moroccan soup, and it's in the borscht black pepper. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Right now, Oscar, what are you going to go for? Oh, it's a tricky one because you suddenly forget every ingredient in soup ever. But I'm going to say coriander. Coriander, says Oscar. Let's see how many of our 100 people said coriander. Coriander is right. Oh, that's a good answer. Down it goes to five. Very well done indeed. Five for coriander. Very nicely done. That's in the Tom Carr soup as well. They found um, coriander seeds in Tutankhamun's tomb. Uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, Rochelle. Mm. Rochelle, what are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to go for milk. Go for milk. Milk. If in doubt, go for milk. Let's see how many of our 100 people said milk. Oh. Milk is right. Well, 19's the high score, 5 was the low score, 1 is now the low score. Well played, Rochelle. Uh, do you know which of the uh, soups that would be in? Uh, Cullen Skink. It is in the Cullen Skink, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, before we head back down the line, let's have a quick look at those scores. 1, the best score of the past, Rochelle. Well done. Rochelle and Chris looking good 
Five is where we find Oscar and Harrison. Ditto, 19, Will and Rebecca. I mean, anything can happen in the next past. You could still be with us, but we'll definitely need a low score from you, Rebecca. So good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Chris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I think I'm going to say... Salt. Salt. Says Chris. Let's see how many of our 100 people said salt. Here is your red line. Salt is right. Look at that. Down it goes to 20. Not bad at all. 21 your total. Yeah, and again, that's in the, the borscht, the tomka and the Moroccan style uh, soup. A little bit of salt. Mm. Oh, I love it. Just mm, salt. salt. Big packet of salt. Oh. Mm. Just, uh, mm. I mean, one, one bit of salt leads oh, to yes, another, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, you know, my goodness. Oh. So Moorish. Well, you know, you get those big pink slabs of the stuff. Oh. Himalayan salt. Beautiful. Every winter, out licking my drive. Mmm, lovely. Oh, love the stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Harrison. Yes. Um, I have two, and I think they're both a bit of a risk. We're looking at a score of 15 or less is what is, what is required. Yeah. So a risk is a good thing. So, I think I'm going to say uh, bay leaves. Bay leaves. Bay leaf says, Harrison, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that red line with bay leaves. Oh. I would have sworn bay leaves would be in one of those. Um, I'm afraid that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 105. That's unlucky, isn't it? I watch enough MasterChef to know that the, oh, they always tear up a couple of yeah, bay leaves, whatever always. they're making. Whatever. Even if it's a lemon sorbet. Oh, thank you. Now, Rebecca, you need to hit 85 or less. OK. Um, I'm not much of a cook. Like, I'm going to go with something that I very much hope will be in there and say onion. Onion. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below this red line with onion. Onion is right, and through you go, Rebecca. Down to 36, and that takes your total up to 55. Well, I've played Rebecca, yeah, it's in the borscht and the Moroccan-style soup. Um, do you want to have a little guess? Yeah, I think for fun... Well, you have chickpeas or uh, lime leaves. Come on. Or kefir, kefir lime. So what are you going to go for? Uh, chickpeas, we'll go chickpeas. Chickpeas you're going to go for. Chickpeas yes. would have scored you eight points in okay. the Moroccan-style soup. Yeah. Would you like to go for the kefir lime? Yes. Leaves? That's a pointless answer. Oh, that's very nice. well good. Done. Very oh. nicely done. Uh, again, that's in the uh, that's, tom that's in the, the tom car. Um, I'll give you some pointless answers. Well, in the Moroccan style soup, I'll give you some low score: seven for lentils, six for cumin, two for harissa, uh, and sunflower oil was a pointless answer for that. Uh, for that tom car, loads of pointless answers: uh, galangal, the kaffir lime leaves, limes, olive oil, fish sauce, prawns, and cress. Um, the hairy bikers borscht, vegetable oil, and dill are the pointless answers. And the minestrone soup, four pointless answers here. Bacon, tomato puree, bouquet garni, and parmesan cheese. And there's one pointless answer for Nick Nair's traditional cunning skin. Do you know what that is? Fennel. There nice. you go. There, there you go. go. How about that? Very well done if you've got any of those pointless answers. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, uh, well, that brings us to the end of our second round, and it means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, and Harrison and Oscar, I'm so sorry. This is where we say a final goodbye. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Harrison and Oscar. Um, for the remaining two pairs, though, it is now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Rochelle and Chris, Rebecca and Will. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit by finding a couple of pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many parts of a bicycle as they could, Richard. Yeah, there'll be six things on the board. Don't forget, two of them are parts of a bicycle, real ones that nobody mentioned. Two of them are fake, though, as well, so we'll play likely or unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So, can you spot the two pointless bicycle parts on this list of potentials? And we've got flaneur, cassette, dropout, front derailleur, crank arm and bracket hinge. There we are. OK, so I know a few. OK. Which uh, ones do you know? Cassette, I believe, is the, the actual cogs of the gears. Mm. 
Um, dropout, I think, is the thing that stops the chain from actually falling. Uh, the front derailleur is part of the gear mechanism. Is Crank it definitely a front one? Uh, you have a mm, front derailleur, yeah, for your front gears, the rear derailleur for the back gears, okay. uh, the bit that actually moves. Um, the crank arm, I think, is part of the pedals, like the, the bit that the pedal sits on. Bracket hinge, I'm not sure about yeah, flannel. Yeah, flan flannel sure. is definitely not, because yeah. that means someone who like walks through the city and takes inspiration from it. Okay. Ah. Yeah, I know that yeah. word, and it's not part of a bike. Well, I think that was amazing. I love that, by the way, Will. I hope it's Great right. to hear. <laughs> uh, Rochelle and Chris, can you find... I think we are on track. It's all a matter of finding which are the pointless ones, then, I guess. Wouldn't it be great if we could find them? What are you going to go for? Let's go front derailleur. Yeah, we'll try that one. Yeah. Can we go for front derailleur? OK, front derailleur. OK, let's find out how many of our 100 people said front derailleur. Is it a pointless bike part? Yeah, go down to one. Down to one. Mm, I was with you, Rochelle. Uh, Rebecca and Will. OK, I, I'm what do you think? cassette, because I think people will get that confused with something to listen to music on. All right, yeah, let's yeah. go with it. I'll go with cassette. Okay, cassette. Cassette. So, Rebecca and Will, let's see if that is a pointless bike part. That's a pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Rebecca and Will. A pointless answer there. Very well done. That was almost the greatest masterclass in the history of the bonus round. You immediately told us what the four correct answers were, so we knew what the two fake ones were. You gave us one of the, uh, the pointless answers, and the other one would have been dropout. No. So dropout and cassette were the two pointless answers there. Uh, dropout cassette is the name of my new mixtape as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you know the two fake ones, they are Bracket Hinge and Flanner, and Crank Arm was the other one that scored a point. That was very impressive, wasn't it? That's very impressive, yeah. First time that's happened. Well, someone's gone, well... That we've had we've all had four. Before. No, oh, yeah. have we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, isn't it funny how quickly I forget? Yes, you do, yeah. <laughs> how quickly I forget. Yeah. Thank it's you. very well done, though. Um, well, yeah, well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means we can add £250 to the jackpot, take the total up to £2,500. But who will be playing for it? Let's find out from the head-to-head. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes that first question, and it is all about famous people whose first names are adjectives. Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of famous people whose first names are adjectives, but who are these people, please? OK, let's reveal the five people. Here they come. All of them have a first name that's an adjective. A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Uh, now, Rochelle and Chris, you're our low scorers. You get to go first. Feel free to chat. So, I think we definitely know four of them. Um, we've got an idea about the other, but we're not sure. So, I think we're going to go for D, D which is... Busy Phillips. Busy Phillips. Yeah. Busy Phillips for D. I'm not sure if that's her surname. OK, Busy Phillips. Now then. Rebecca and Will, do you want to talk us through that board? OK, we think we know some of them. Yeah, um, I think um, A is Dusty Springfield. B... Mm. We, Muddy Waters? We might be Muddy Waters. C is Frank Lampard. E's Matt Lucas. Um, I think A. Tricky, isn't it? I mean, I, th I think more people will know Dusty Springfield. Do you want to try Muddy Waters? Go for it. Nothing to do. Give it a whirl. OK, B, Muddy Waters. B, Muddy Waters. So we have Busy Phillips and we have Muddy Waters. Uh, Rochelle and Chris have gone for Busy Phillips for D. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Yes. Busy Phillips is right. Oh, that's a great answer. Oh, it's a great answer. Down again for three. Very well done indeed, Rochelle and Chris. 
Meanwhile, Rebecca and Will have gone for B, muddy waters. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Muddy waters. Not sure about this. <gasps> muddy that's waters right. is right. Three is what it's got to beat. And it does. Look at that. Down it goes to two. Oh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> Very well done, indeed. <laughs> I thought that was all over when I saw three for Busy Phillips. Uh, Rebecca and Will, well done. It means after one question, you are up 1-0. Well, wow, best two answers on the board as well. Very well done. Uh, neither of their real names, of course. He's a McKinley Morganfield is Muddy Waters, and Busy Phillips' real first name is Elizabeth. Um, she's in Freaks and Geeks, Dawson's Creek. Um, bits and bobs like that. A, quite right, was Dusty Springfield. Um, you were right to avoid it because she would have scored you 29 points. Um, you're right about Frank Lampard as well. He scores 55. And Matt Lucas, of course, Matt, I suppose, is an adjective, isn't it? Like yeah, paint. Matt Paint. Be Matt. Yeah. Uh, would have scored 53. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your second question. Now, Rochelle and Chris, you have to win this one. Stay in the game. Mm. Rebecca and Will get to answer it first. Good luck. Our second question is all about... Countries that changed capitals, Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you the names of five former capitals now, uh, alongside the year in which they ceased to be a capital. We just need you to tell us which countries were these the capitals of. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five former capitals, and here they come. Kyoto, 1868. Roskilde, 1443. Rio de Janeiro, 1960. Zomba, 1975. And Auckland, 1865. There we are. Rebecca and Will will go first. Kyoto, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Japan. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go with Kyoto and Japan. Kyoto and Japan. So Rebecca and Will. So Rochelle and Chris, it is over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? Um, this is a hard one. Yeah. So Rio de Janeiro. Brazil, Auckland, New Zealand. The other two we're not sure on. Um, I'd be tempted to go Auckland. Should we just try it yeah. and get it right? So we'll go um, Auckland, New Zealand. OK, Auckland, New Zealand. So we have Japan versus New Zealand. Uh, Rebecca and Will have gone for Japan for Kyoto. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. Japan is right. 47 for Japan. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rochelle and Chris have gone for New Zealand for Auckland. Let's see how many of our 100 said New Zealand. New Zealand is right. Oh, it's going to be close. That goes down to 50. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. One for the pulse, isn't it? This head to head. <laughs> um, very, very close indeed. But uh, Rebecca and Will. Very well done. After only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0. It's a great head-to-head. -head. You only won by four points overall <laughs> over the two questions. But, uh, so very well played. It's a very unlucky 2-0 uh, defeat, but uh, beautifully done. Yeah, Kyoto, um, there was a, a fishing town called Edo, which became Tokyo, which means eastern capital. And they're anagrams of each other. Whoa. That's just too How about that for anagrammatical sweet. geography? Poetic. That's lovely. Um, Rio de Janeiro, of course, is Brazil. Would have scored you too many points, though. Would have scored you 65. But these other two would have won you the point. Uh, do you know Roskilde? They have a massive music festival there every year. And my brother's band always headlines it because they're huge in Scandinavia. Scandinavia being a clue. Um, it is... It's not Sweden. It is not Sweden. It is not Sweden. How did you know that? Um, Denmark. Denmark. Yeah, is the got there right immediately. Right immediately. Right immediately. Right. Literally, how does, got there. How does he do it? I know. Amazing. Would have scored you seven points. Um, Zomba. Uh, well, listen, it's now Lilongwe, if that helps you at all. Not a bit. Very well done at home if you said Malawi. Malawi. It's the best answer on the board. Would have scored you three points. Of course, Rio de Janeiro, is, Brasilia is now the capital, and Auckland, Wellington is now the capital, and Ross killed Copenhagen is the capital. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that means the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head. -head, our golden couple, Rochelle and Chris. Um, you've been stunning the whole way through, but it was only your first time. Look on that as your, your, your dress rehearsal. OK. And uh, we'll see you next time. Look forward to it. Uh, Rochelle and Chris, thanks very much indeed. Uh, but for Rebecca and Will, now time for the pointless final.
Congratulations, Rebecca and Will. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> wow. This is perfect. Out round one last time. Yeah. Yo stood back, let the jackpot grow a little bit, <laughs> and uh, here you are, stepping in to claim it, or at least have a shot at claiming it anyway. Um, what's going to help you win? What do you, what do you need to see come up on the board? Oh, so um, grunge era alternative rock for me, or nerdcore hip hop, that's quite niche. Uh, I'm likely yeah. to come up with that. <laughs> okay, well, you never know. You never know. Yeah, um, I like anything about Italy, that would be nice. Lovely. Um, yeah. I don't know, really. Let's see. We've got... The 1960s US civil rights movement, the 2020 Tour de France, colourful film actors, Cornish art and entertainment. Wow. Mm. I mean, recently there's been a lot on TV about Cornwall that we've not Listen, watched. <laughs> my, my mother lives in Cornwall, my sister lives in Cornwall. If we get it wrong, My we'll uncle be... lives in Cornwall. We'll be out of the family if we get anything wrong. Yeah. I didn't grow up in Cornwall, so I probably don't know as much about Cornish art and entertainment as would be useful, but I think we could give it a go. And I mean, I certainly know nothing about any of the others, so... Not colourful film actors, no? OK. I, I, don't, I don't think it's our Corn strongest. Cornish art and the entertainment, it yeah. is, and well, pressure's off me. It's been on the board for quite a long time. That has been on the board a long time, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I thought as soon as you went through every single bit on a bike, I thought the Tour de France was an absolute <laughs> gimme, but... Uh, so Cornish art, farewell. Cornish art and entertainment oh. served us well. It has. There's some very, very best of luck. Three very different questions here. Um, we're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for anyone credited with appearing in the 1939 film of Jamaica Inn, according to IMDb. We are looking for any actors in five or more episodes of the reboot of Poldark, 2015 to 2019. Or we are looking for any artist from the St Ives School with works in the Tate please. So, cast of Jamaica in, uh, actors in five more episodes of Poldark, all those St Ives School artists with works in the Tate. The very best of luck. There we are. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot of two and a half thousand pounds is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK. The, there's an artist, I don't know if there's an Ives School, but there's an artist called Ben Nicholson. Okay. Who definitely has something in the Tate. Okay, worth a shot. Isn't um, it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You watched Poldark. I have watched Poldark. <laughs> of course, my mind's gone completely blank. I can't think of anybody who was in it. Um, I'm just trying to think of more people who are artists. Well, wasn't Don French in Poldark? Possibly. I don't know. I mean, I watched it on the periphery. Oh, Jim Nettles was in it. Oh, there you go. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, Jim Nettles was in it. Um, um, uh, need one more. Um, St Ives. With, with um, actors, actors, actors. I'm doing a blank. I don't know. Oh, God. Um, Ten seconds I'm left. Think of the families, or um, you think of any other artist? Just a name. There, there was. I mean, there, yeah, no. That I'm afraid is your minute up. I'm so sorry. No. Um, let's have your three answers. Well, we've got we've got two. <laughs> uh, well, let's just say Dawn French. I don't know if she's All in right, it. All right, okay. Yeah. We'll say Dawn French. I don't think she's in it. But... Don't think so. But so Dawn French, Dawn French. Dawn for Paul Dark. Yeah. yeah. Jim Nettles. Jim Nettles. Paul Dark. Paul Dark. And Ben Nicholson for ben... a St Ives School artist. Nicholson. Hopefully. Yeah. Very good. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Ben Nicholson. OK, we'll put Ben Nicholson last. Least likely to be Dawn pointless? French. Dawn French. Dawn French. She's probably wrong. And then Jim Nettles we put in the yeah. middle. Well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Dawn French, Jim Nettles, Ben Nicholson. Well, very, very best of luck. Um, if you were to win this jackpot with one of these answers, what would you like to do with it? Two and a half thousand quid. There's quite a lot that needs doing in the house. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we did a loft conversion last year and we ran out of money, so I've got a walk-in wardrobe that is a couple of rails 
Yeah. So for which are, one of which is already going like that. They so. get that kid. They yeah. do that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be great. Um, anything you want to add to that, Will? Uh, no, no. No. Happy good. With that. Good. Well done. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> um, your first answer was Dawn French. In this case, we're looking for actors in five or more episodes of Poldark. Let's see if Dawn French is right. Let's see how many people said it. Oh no, not Dawn French. Not surprised. She was. Filling that place, I think, for you slightly. Was, we weren't yeah, entirely sure yeah. if she was in. Jim Nettles is your next answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jim Nettles. Is it pointless? No, oh. bad luck. Not Jim Nettles, I'm afraid. Oh, no, it's John Nettles, isn't ah, it? Ah, you see? Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> We now turn to your inspired third answer, Ben Nicholson. This sort of came to you from nowhere. Well, not from nowhere. You've been uh, and you remembered Ben Nicholson. Let's just hope, is he part of the St Ives School for £2,500? Might he be pointless? Ben Nicholson. That's right. Ben Nicholson is a correct answer. I'm afraid Dawn French was incorrect. Uh, Jim Nettles was incorrect. Ben Nicholson now takes us down in single figures. Still going down with Ben Nicholson. You've done it, look at that. Very well done indeed. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, the rail can go to the tip. Oh, ben Nicholson was a pointless answer. You have won £2,500. Very, very well done. Yeah, Ben Nicholson, uh, he's uh, the husband of Barbara Hepworth. Barbara Hepworth would have scored six points. Um, she's the, the better known of the two. Uh, Alfred Wallace would have scored points as well for the Tates and Eyes, but everyone else was pointless for that category. Very nicely played. Um, yeah, uh, not Jim Nettles. John Nettles, yeah. who played Jim Bergerac. Exactly. But, uh, so, you know, put them together and what do you got? Uh, doesn't matter, it turns out, because uh, you won the money anyway. Um, the cast of the film Jamaica Inn, I mean, good luck anyone getting uh, one on this. Um, those are all pointless answers. The only ones that scored points, Maureen O'Hara, Charles Lawton, Leslie Banks and Robert Newton. Everyone else is a pointless answer in that category. Uh, now, uh, actors in five or more episodes of Poldark had a good old cast. You could have had uh, B.T. Edney, James Wilby, there's John Nettles, <laughs> Rebecca Front was a pointless answer there, Phil Davis a pointless answer, Pip Torrens, uh, Robert Dawes as well, everyone a pointless answer apart from Aidan Turner, Eleanor Tomlinson, uh, Heide Reed and Jack Farthing. Everyone else is a pointless answer. Well done if you've got one. And loads and loads of pointless answers on the Tates and Ives um, list. There's Ben Nicholson right at the top of our uh, board there. Bernard Leach, Graham Sutherland, um, Terry Frost as well. As I say, only uh, Barbara Hepworth and Alfred Wallace scored points at all. Everyone else uh, who's on that Tate list was a pointless answer, so very well done if you got one at home. Congratulations on getting one uh, in the studio. And how lovely, your, your Cornish past. Has been, uh, you'll, be, you'll be allowed back over the border at some oh, point well, now. Thank goodness. There you are. <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Rebecca and Will, who take away today's jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>